scientific terms. So when you're doing research, do you find it difficult to um, gather data other than specific case studies on trans Great question. Um, you know, the presumption these, this gentleman is making is that the state of transcendence can't be quantified. So how do you really make meaningful scientific statements about something that can't be quantified? Well, in fact, it can be quantified because they have done studies where they have, you know, asked people to just ping a bell when they're in the transcendent state or they've interrupted somebody and said, you know, were you in a transcendent state or not? And they have found that this coherence of the EEG really corresponds to when people are in transcendent states of consciousness. The other thing that's really interesting is that once people practice the meditation technique regularly, what begins to happen is that the transcendent state begins to encroach into your waking day so that it's not just when you're meditating, but that you can experience elements of transcendent as in your, in your waking day. And they've done studies, for example, where they have surveyed people who are long-term meditators and said, you know, how many transcendent experiences do you normally have per day, per week, whatever. And then they've looked at their EEGs in the waking state and they've seen that there is a correlation between how many of these transcendent states they have during waking and how much coherence in their EEG is present during waking. And in fact, um, a big deal about this effect, mental and physical, of, of the meditation is that if it only had its effects while you were meditating, it wouldn't be a big deal. But the fact is, it goes along through the day. For example, it lowers blood pressure. So, you know, you maybe you've meditated in the morning and in the evening and somebody measures your blood pressure in the afternoon, but there's a sustained benefit. And in the same way, when somebody irritates you now that you're meditating and you don't pop off and you don't, you know, get as angry as you did before, something in your nervous system is persisting and showing some kind of continuity. So, in fact, you can quantify transcendence, not just during the meditation state, but even during the wakeful state to some degree. I have one, one more question to follow up, and that is, is this experience of transcendence unique only to this meditation, or are there you know, records or experiences from the past of the experience of transcendence? <laughs> Well, I, I think that people can briefly experience transcendence. Sometimes when you're waking up in the morning, just in a little zone between sleeping and waking, or as you're dozing off, or maybe when you have a peak experience, like, you know, perhaps when you're a child is born or on your wedding day, you are suffused with the same kind of joy. But I think if you're looking to have this replicable day-to-day -day experience, this is, in my, to my knowledge, the best way to get it. And um, there are many great meditation traditions. And I, I know, for example, the many great Buddhist traditions. But my understanding of them is that they're not so much interested in seeking transcendent experiences as they are in enlightenment and insight. It's a, it's a very different way of thinking. So if this transcendent state is one that sounds like something you're interested in, I would look into transcendental meditation because in my book, it really is the quickest, simplest, and most effective way to access it. Hi, David. I was wondering if uh, you could talk some more about how this temporal illuminated state uh, interacts with the relationship between that and your investigations of darkness, absurdity, mystery, weirdness. Like how, do you, how do you reconcile those two things? One is a temporal state, which is only part of your day, but then much of your creative investigations are in kind of the darkness. Well, uh, the question is, how does this relate to uh, the ideas that I particularly love, um, which some people say are darker ideas, but um, too, yeah. yeah. anyway, um, you know, this, as I said before, 
the the transcending is an experience that I love to have, love, capital L. And I saw uh, my life get better and better and better once I started meditating, for sure. And another name for this field within in Vedic language is called Atma, meaning the self. There's a line we've all heard, know thyself. This is the self of all that is. You know that, it's knowing totality. Everything that is a thing, they say, has emerged from this field of unity. It's unity of in quantum physics, the unity of all the particles and forces of creation exists in that field within. It's a magical field, fantastic. Ideas, everything springs from there. You start expanding that ball of consciousness, like say, expand that ball of consciousness you can catch ideas at a deeper level and you're going to become more and more you so ideas come for everything and anything we're going to you're going to fall in love with a certain kind of idea it, you're going to catch that easier and easier and on a deeper and deeper level i'm going to fall in love with different ideas you get an idea you fall in love with it you're rocking it's a beautiful day you know what you're going to do now you got more energy to do it more intelligence to do it more have everything positive and you are going it's very very good just keep expanding that container of consciousness because like they, they say when an idea comes it may be coming to us from a long way away but we don't know it until it enters our conscious mind if the conscious every one of us has consciousness like i say but not everyone has the same amount the potential for us human beings is infinite consciousness, infinite enlightenment, total fulfillment, liberation, salvation, the whole thing. So you expand this ball of consciousness more and more by experiencing that. It doesn't come for you. You can't go to the store and buy a box of consciousness. You got to go to where it is. And you can't wish yourself there or imagine yourself there. You need, all you need is a technique. Now, maybe there's a lot of techniques, but make sure that your technique that you want and you've got works. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. It's a real experience to experience it. Every time you experience it, you infuse more of it. The ball of consciousness <laughs> expands and expands. You're making the subconscious conscious until it's all everything is conscious you're wide awake everything is there totality you got one back there? Yeah. hi david um i was just curious you were talking earlier about uh, how it's all positive energy when you're in that transcendental state and um and then you were just mentioning how your ideas are mostly dark ideas no i didn't say mostly as some people or, say that they say i need help mentally <laughs> stuff like that I love all kinds of ideas. I, it, it's, this doesn't have to be one thing or another. You, like I always say, I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's all right. Um, there's three girls coming down the street. One of them is a brunette, one of them is a blonde, one of them is a redhead. There's no maybe <laughs> rhyme or reason for it, but you just fall in love with a redhead. Okay. See what I mean? Well, okay. It's just, <laughs> I mean, I was thinking as, you know, as, uh, <laughs> as, as beautiful as uh, Mulholland Drive is, it's, it's a nightmare. It's like a nightmare. So There's it's... many, many, many beautiful things in it. Right, that's what I mean. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think, I think that answers it. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> that's, a, that's the line Bobby remembered. Um, we don't have to suffer to show suffering. Now think about that. They have a thing, and I say it started, I think, with the French, who I love. <laughs> but they started this thing of the starving artist in the garret. Starving, cold, hardly any food in the, maybe not even a refrigerator. And this guy's got some melancholy and a little bit of depression. And it becomes very romantic, this idea. 
And as I say, I think it's a way to get girls. Because <laughs> they come to this garret and they say, oh my goodness, let me cook a little meal for you. And let me, let me come close to you and warm you, warm you up. It's so beautiful. But if the artist is really suffering, really suffering, like I say, if he had a splitting headache, nausea, and diarrhea on top of that, how much work is he going to get done and how much is he going to enjoy it? This makes life more and more and more truly enjoyable. <laughs>